Hello everybody, so thought I would continue with the Joshua Cologne um, chat log. Um, it's been a while since I've done it, but the reason I kind of like every now and again delving into these new chat logs were, as I said, it's a bit interesting to see, you know, the, the differences in sort of this kind of criminal behaviour. Um, when the communications is different, I find that interesting. So, for instance, you know, the chat logs initially from TCAP are all on the computer. Um, so they're all typed out in like a Yahoo chat room. But these are slightly different because it's because they're on the smartphone. It's a more personalised way of chatting. You can send photos. The, the, the communication is different. The speech is different. Um, I find that kind of interesting. Um you know, because obviously this this is all, you know, the channel that I do, it's all about criminality and, and getting into people's heads and the behaviour and that kind of stuff. So this is this is kind of interesting to... And it's, it's the same... The thing that allows me to it is exactly the same thing that... It, well, it's the same as TCAP, you know, it's, it's all from Hanson versus Predator, but it's, it's, it's such a big thing for these guys to do... Um, you know they want to they're willing to risk everything for an encounter with these people um it is fascinating to me because it's like there's nothing more powerful really in what you know the most po the most powerful forces in nature is to reproduce right just you know to survive to reproduce um to survive so, it's a form of the drive to reproduce. It's all about sex, you know, the sexual union. And these guys, for whatever reason, they go after these they are predators. They go after the weaker type. Because some of them, I mentioned it in the last video I did with regard to Lorne. Some of them go after these people because they can't get someone their own age. It's what people do generally do there's nothing wrong with going having a preference for younger people um younger as in you know younger years not as in children <laughs> but um the, 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 mainly these people are deprived and still have that drive for that union with the opposite sex but they're so caught up in it and it, and the need you know the 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 need of it is so strong that they're willing to put everything on the line and go after children um you know the preying on the weak and vulnerable that's that's why we don't like them um the the it it interests me that you get these people if you were to take this element of the behavior away and let's look at their, their lives, you would say that they were good people, not all of them of course, but let's just look at some of the people from TCAP, like um, the doctor, um, you know, from California, um, Woolen, is it Maurice, is it Woolen? Dreamy, tall dreamy doc, basically, you know, he was a cancer research doctor, family man, very well respected, you know, um, one would certainly, if you were to take his predatory behaviour to one side and make a judgement on whether he was a good person or not, I mean, we don't know the ins and outs, he might be a complete twat, his family might have hated him, but you would think that he would sort of pass that threshold of, of being judged as a decent human being. But yet, there's a sinister side to him, so he has these impulses and drives that he just, they just go out of the window. It's very interesting to me because, um, it, you know, he had everything to lose, didn't he? Like, if you look at somebody, I always use Lorne as the poster boy, I can't help it, but if you look at someone like Lorne, he's got nothing, he had nothing to lose, really, in, in the, uh, which is ironic because he kind of reacted the most strongly out of all of them, you know? Um, he had nothing to lose, do you know what I mean? Like, um, he had no money, he had no proper job. No partner, no children, family didn't like him anymore, he, nothing, you know, absolutely nothing going for him, you know, obviously quite 
mentally screwed up, shall we say. A lot of stuff going on there. You know, he had... It's like, well, got nothing to lose. Uh, they, you know, a lot of these people have... Um, you know, this guy, as I, from, as I remember it, you know, from the information that we got, he had a decent job, you know, driving around in a nice car and whatnot. 31 years old, I believe. You know, you're young. You know, you've got... You know, it's probably like lacking in confidence... But that can be that can be overcome um, if you deal with it in the right way. Um, you have to accept your limitations. You know, you have to. I mean, I, I assume he's not the best looking guy. Um, you have to accept your limitations with regard to what you're capable of. You know, he's never going to be a fucking. Uh, film star who's going to have w- women on his arm every day chasing him. It's not going to happen, but that doesn't mean that you can't be the best person that you can be. You work on yourself properly rather than thinking, oh, screw it, I'm just going to go after a kid. You know, but yet, yeah, look at the doctor. You know what I mean? He went after, he wanted to fulfill that fantasy. And he still, even at his age, after having, after you know, having young girls, uh, as, as you know, young daughters, he still decided to put everything on the line and follow that impulse. Um, yeah, I digress. Maybe we should get stuck into it. Um, maybe I'll talk on that topic that I just did in more detail in another video. Maybe a stream would be a good idea. Uh, and then it's not just me. Um, but anyway, shall we um, shall we crack on? So, um, uh, hey baby, I miss you too, sexy. Having a good day so far. I think I heard them say they're going next weekend. I'm just gonna ask her tonight. Hate that they don't talk to me. This weekend or what next weekend being two weekends, not the end of this week, the end of next week. So that she's trying to arrange the uh, the decor, she's trying to arrange the meeting. Um, oh, okay, nice. And do you know what day they are leaving? Because if they leave Friday, I can come Friday night. So I mean, this guy—he's <laughs> not wasting any time. I'll find out, let you know. Um, so I don't get my phone taken. Gotta go, so I don't get my phone taken, and then. Four hours later, hey baby, hey boss. Uh, I don't like that, that domineering type thing. Um, can you call me? No. One sec. K. K. Can only talk for a man hiding in my closet, but supposed to be doing homework and cleaning. Hmm. Okay, you the. Right, this is much later. So I assume they've had the call. Um, and then, so I finally talked to my mom. Okay. Ooh. If I'm good and don't talk sassy to her, I fucking hate that word, uh, and do my homework and do a list of chores that she made for me, I can stay there. Stay here. Okay, for how many days is she going away? Don't know yet. We didn't get that far. I'll find out more tomorrow. Oh, it's 11.11. Make a wish. I didn't know people did that when it's 11.11. Um, I did. Good night, sweetie. Night, boss. Mm. They're very, like, um, they're very good, these decoys. I'd really love to go to, to know more about the, uh, the training that they go through. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not months of, you know, months of... I just I just find it, I think they do a good job of reeling these people in, you know, referring to him as boss. Keeps him in an emotionally uh, dominant position in his mind. He thinks that she's going to do anything that he tells her to. He thinks, basically, he thinks he's got to where he wants her, you know what I mean? Um... Sexy, no you are, no you are, boring, I miss, so here we are the next day, I freaking miss you, you make me so happy, can't wait to give you lots of lots of hugs and kisses, send me pictures of school, you see, this is when you know you're getting too, 
not just somebody who's lost the way a little bit. Like I was talking about earlier as someone who can't get someone. So he goes after the kids. You know, he goes after somebody who he feels that, you know, that someone who you feel you can get. You know, it's like, right, okay, can't get an adult my own age for whatever reason. Um, so I'm going to go after someone who I think I can manipulate. I mean, really all kind of dating not all but you know when you do dating and online dating and all that it's all a game it's all manipulation it's all you know it's all a game basically isn't it you know you know there's like a guy when he sees an attractive girl there's an immediate instinct to size them up and your brain will tell you if you want to have sex with them or not and then you'll pursue that woman because that's what you want to do. But then the game is to make the woman that believe that you don't want to just do that, that you're interested in her. Which, eventually, when you get to know, it will be the case in a lot of cases and not. More often than not, not in most, but, well, I'd say most cases that, in my experience, not through myself, but generally speaking blokes will tend to be there'll be a high f percentage of guys who'll cheat if if given the right opportunity it's just the way blokes are they think with the dick most of the time um women are prone to cheating as all human beings are but i don't find it as prevalent the more kind of loyal you know they want it they've got and that's just my observations, but um, oh, sorry about that blip. Uh, yeah, so most guys who kind of generally cheat. It might, might sound like a harsh judgment, but in my experience, you know, like I said, from people that I've known and given the opportunity, things like that. Um, most people, when it comes to that, it's a, such, such an alluring prospect um, to be, you know, to 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 to, to have that sort of temptation. Um, and deep down, girls kind of know that. So when when you're in the initial stages of like you know talking to someone, whether it be online or in a bar, you've got to play like a subtle game. It, it's fucking, it's, it's, you know what I mean. It can be frustrating. It can be a bit of fun, but you know you you just talking generally, and you've got to give like you got to play little innuendos and be subtle. You can't just come out with it and say I find you really attractive. I want to have sex with you. It's not going to work, even though they kind of know that deep down. You've got to go through this game. Of subtleness and and of kind of, of of not a kind of you know existential kind of throwing it in your face. It's it's just it's just part of the way it is, isn't it? Because you know, kind of women know what blokes are like deep down. You know, these guys have that same um, impulse, but the the reason they interest us is because they take it so far. To pray after these children, which we can't grasp. It's like we've all had times, or most people have had times in our lives when there's a dry spell, and for whatever reason, we're down on our confidence when it comes to members of the opposite sex. You know, you just go with it. If you feel like shit, you feel like shit. But at no point, you know, when I've been in that position, I've thought, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll fucking hang outside a playground and get one of these. It's just fucking very strange. Um, and that's the thing here, send me pictures in school. It's like, God, man, you know, get a grip. Um, I miss you too. I didn't take my phone today. How's your day? It was good. Your pictures had me so horny today. My dick was so hard thinking about you. Okay. There's no subtleness there, is there? Um... <laughs> Do you know what it reminds me of? There's a bit in To Catch a Predator. I can't remember. It'd probably be better for, to tell you this if I knew who the Predator was. But you'll probably know when I tell you. It was like a... I think it was that... Might have been that Nathan Downer guy. And he goes... Um, 
he's talking. It, it, it's it's in the chat log, and he's going. First, I will take off your this uh, your bra. Then I will take off your underwear. Then who knows what will happen. And I was like, this is the worst innuendo of all time. It's like, oh, I'll take off your all of your clothes. And then, hmm, who knows where, who knows where that's going to lead. It's like, you, could, you know, fucking hell, man. It's like, you might as well just say, well, first, I'm going to take off all of your clothes, completely strip down, put my erect penis into your vagina, and then who knows what's going to happen then. It's like, fucking idiot. Anyway, um... Well, I'm so excited that we are going to hang out. Me too. When did you say you could come? Me too. When did you say you could come? Well, I'm so excited. Anyway. When your mum goes away. That's the only time we could hang out since she doesn't let you go out. Um, I know, but she'll be gone for the weekend. But I don't know when she's leaving. Well, you have to call me as soon as she leaves, then I'll start driving to you. Because it really isn't wasting any time. I will. Oh, my God, this is really happening. I'm so excited. Yeah, me too. You are so sexy. I'm a lucky man. No, I'm the lucky one. This dick is all yours. Sure, she's over the moon. Send me a picture, baby. Okay, so that's uh, blanked out, which it should be. Oh my god, you are beautiful. You are too sweet. Uh, I mean, is that assume? I assume that's a picture of him showing how amazed he is, and he's he's okay. Just <laughs> just being honest. <laughs> We've seen that before, haven't we, guys? Lol, I love your face. I want you to dress me in a short skirt when I come over. What? I want you to dress... F oh, fucking hell, I read that wrong then. I was like, hang on a minute. Is this guy fucking cross-dresser here? Um, I want you to dress for me in a short skirt when I come over. It's my borderline dyslexia coming on there when I can't fucking uh, read properly. Okay, I can do that with no underwear on. Lol, I always wear panties though. I'll take your panties off myself as well as all your clothes. Lol, you're making me blush. Good means you are happy. Mm. Uh, I'm going to kiss you all over, even down there, and you are going to love it. Can't wait to taste you. Oh, you sick fuck. You see, I must... I mentioned before, I do struggle with these videos. It's difficult to get through because of how gross it is. I also, as I've said, it, and I know I repeat myself, but it is worth repeating... Good points are always worth repeating. Um, I don't wish to spread hate, which is very difficult to do when you're doing something like this, because these people, like I've said, they're not going to enrage hatred more than any other group of people. They are child predators. They go after the thing that, you know, it's like I've said, animals and children are what we care about. You know, they're seen as innocent and sweet and... The, the very essence of what's good about life. It's like there's a a profound passage, a profound statement that Jesus is believed to have said. Um, and he said, to enter the kingdom of heaven, um, you must be like little children. And what he means, or what I believe is the interpretation, is that when you... Especially when they're at about four and five. I've had experience with um, through family and various things. When children of that age, especially little girls I found, they are just wondrous. They are they have no judgment towards anyone. They unconditionally love everyone and everything and it's like life is a joy and it it's such a pleasure. To, to be in the company because that judgment that you face from everybody else in the world especially today with the social media and all whatnot and how pr much pressure there is on people um it's such a joy it's like the dog you know why people love dogs so much it's the same thing you know they say you know i, I remember once i was um 
How's I doing? I parked my car up. There's, I'm quite lucky. I mean, it's not it's not a fantastic area where I live, really. But there is a nice, like, little, tiny little uh, national, not a national park, but a little, what do they call them? Nature reserve, close to where I live. I spend a lot of time there, especially when the weather's nice, because I just love spending time in nature. And it's a little, little lake where there's loads of rare, uh, birds. There's a lot of bird watchers there, blah, blah, blah. And I remember seeing this, um, going off on one here, but I'll carry on. Um, I remember see, uh, just parking up in my car, and there was this woman, like, in her probably late 50s. And it was, like, early in the morning, so I parked my car, and she just walked past me with these two husky dogs, and she had the biggest smile on her face that I've seen, and, it, and the dogs adored her. And I, I noticed, I'm a, I love to study people and... You know, why people are happy and why people are not. I do it. I'm a massive people watcher. She had no rings on her finger, I assume. She didn't strike me that... Something told me that she wasn't in a relationship and that these dogs were her life. And it just... The joy emanating from her was was was, was kind of, like, obvious. And the dogs loved her, don't judge her, and it's the same with young children. And if somebody threatens, obviously these children here are, a little, you know, that they're, they're not necessarily prepubescent, but they're still, ch they are still children. They are not, they're just still children. You know what I mean? And it's like when someone comes along and threatens that, there's nothing more enraging. I understand, I understand it. It's the normal reaction, but the normal reaction doesn't necessarily mean it's the correct one. If you carry on, um, it's like you have to feel, not feel sorry as in you sympathise because they are responsible for their own lives and it's like if you have these feelings, you need to deal with it and you do not, you do not under, un, uh, under any circumstances hurt anybody else for your own petty benefit. You just don't, it's a rule and karma will fuck you over, the universe is on it straight away, if you do that kind of shit, maybe not immediately, but ultimately it will do, but I don't mean that you feel sorry for them, and that you go around and fucking give them a hug, but just imagine what it feels like to be that person, just imagine what it feels like to have that sense of worthlessness, and that massive need and deprivation, it must be shit, do you know what I mean, it's like you've got to be grateful, so being good is is harder. Being living an authentic life can be more challenging. The quick and easy path, the dark side, is the the you know the easier way. It's like I'll get that immediately. You know, it's like why these guys go for the younger ones. It's like they're not going to do the hard thing. If you can't get a woman for whatever reason, what do you do about it? The quick and easy path for what these guys do is pray after the younger kid who doesn't know any better. And I'll get my immediate gratification from it. What they're too thick to realise is that even if they get it and succeed, what's he going to do to them? They'll just turn into a bigger monster. The harder thing to do is straighten yourself out. Realise why, why you're down on your confidence. And that's fucking hard. Really hard. You've got to plunge into the depths of your soul. You know, sometimes to it might be it might be something as simple that could fix you as uh, doing something you've always wanted to do, like learning a new skill or learning to play an instrument or going to a place you've wanted to do, and that could sort you out. You know, and give you confidence and finding a new career. In some certain circumstances, it might be that you need to um, go into some kind of childhood trauma and delve into that um, you don't necessarily have to spend thousands and speak to a psychiatrist and go into it and find new, in, you know in, in immaculate detail but just to address it and to do that is ridiculously difficult um, it's like a friend of mine he he um, he owns a couple of bars, and he's a great guy, I've probably mentioned him before in other videos, when he's sober, he's one of the, just, really great company, very funny, very intelligent, just a great, you know, one of them people that there's never a dull moment when he's around, and he's like, got a great sense of humour, people take to him, 
he's got so many like I, I understand the family dynamics of when he was growing up he got the shit kicked out of him he got really tortured by his older brother really um, not necessarily tortured but well yeah I suppose you could call it that but anyway he, he's never dealt with that and drink is how he deals with it and the partner that he's currently got is much older than him who he met through his um through one of his bars she she worked for him and she still works for him and they you know they go on these holidays and whatnot and he's it's basically he's found a path through alcohol which makes life tolerable the hardest thing to do which is and i'm not saying i've got anywhere with it We've all got our demons. I was in that path that he was on where I used drink to over, was to, you know, gloss over the demons to being able to carry on. Now, for the last 12, 12 months, two years, I don't drink at all. And it can be fucking tough. You know what I mean? So my social circles are not what they used to be because of age and people settling down and whatnot. And you do face some difficult times. It's like, you're like, fucking hell. Not drinking as much has cut down a lot of these social circles. I, but I know deep down that drinking's not the answer. I'm not going to find the answer there. It's just not going to happen. But it's a necessary evil in some people's lives. And and him for him, for my mate to fix himself, it would take just so much courage and work and he's, he's just not doing it you know and most people don't most people just don't most people just carry on with the mundane and drink and from the outside you know they pose like a i've got a yoga teacher right nice girl um uh not a personal one i go to a class once a week uh with my friend and uh, she's she's really nice you know we've, we've been going for a few months and it's really interesting because what she does is she um she's teaching us and, and the movements that she does are really good i find them quite beneficial because i've got a few aches and pains because i played a lot of sports like you know uh, and i do you know physically active person so it helps me and it's the mindfulness that i like as well and she says things at the beginning like she's like um oh i'll be um right okay now you settle down into your personal space relax and she's saying all these things and she's on a fucking phone half the time and it's like, hang on a minute, sweetheart, you, you know, you're teaching us presence, you've got to be present yourself, as I'm saying this, you wonder why the fuck I'd go, to be honest, but I'm able to sort of put that to one side and benefit from other, and, and, and she has got a warmth to her, she's a really nice person, she's going through some shit at the minute, to be fair, I think she's gone through a divorce or something, but, so she's obviously coping the best that she can. Um, and she keep and she's also she's posting lots of pictures on Facebook about um, like she's drinking a lot like she did it last night oh Luke and there's like a picture on Facebook of two gin glasses oh it's carrying on and all this and it's like picture after picture it's like Jesus you're supposed to be present you know it's like don't it's like I understand you've got to have fun you've got to socialize but you you know it's it's like you slip into that really alluring um you you know kind of way of life of drinking socializing having that kind of materialistic fun not materialistic but kind of it's a funny one because i i, I know that you can have fun but i just know that we're going to do you know a stream our next stream with uh tiffany and shin is going to be and we're going to have a somebody from in the community talking with us as well about their experiences is about Lauren's relationship to alcohol and ours as well because it's a massive thing but um i've kind of gone off on one really haven't i, I just find it interesting to relate these stories to people because i know that it kind of you know that's why i like doing these kind of videos sharing experiences about different elements and not just going into the vulgar parts about it um see what we can gather we can 
learn together you know what i mean just some if i can say something through my own personal experience that can you know make someone think about something a bit differently that it, it means a lot to me really um anyway should we get back to um the matter at hand which is this guy what time are we on here right we're nearly on uh just a, another five minutes um my tummy has butterflies. Oh, yeah, God. Are you going to... Are you going to be able to not get me pregnant? That's a strange way of writing it. Are you going to be able to not get me pregnant? Yeah, I'll wear a condom. That's got it in. Okay, thank you. Hmm, I'm so horny right now. Not much longer. <sighs> yeah, well, finally make a mate love. I was thinking of staying over and just leaving in the morning. Oh, that's got of him. You could do that. Of course I can. Just want to be sure your mum won't be home the next morning. Yeah. I bet you do. They're going for several days. Just don't know when they plan to leave. Cool. So I'll stay over and we'll cuddle all night. You make me so happy. You make me more happier. It's too bad you weren't old enough to marry. I would marry you. Fucking okay, hell. I mean, does he... Uh, <sighs> I used to think that Lorne meant that. Part of me still thinks he kind of did a little bit. I don't think, you know, I mean, Christ. It's just a tactic that these guys are using, isn't it? How old do you have to be to be married 18? Ugh. In six years, you can. But I doubt you would want... I bet you thought the video had gone then. Uh, I was trying to work out the fucking maths, right? Is she supposed to be 12? It's 18... Oh, right, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, tw you know, 12 plus 6 is fucking 18. So this girl's 12. In 6 years, you can... I mean, 12, 13. Jesus fucking Christ. That I've, I've mentioned that that twelve that that kind of age it, it just makes it appear a lot worse to me. Um, in six years you could, but I doubt you would want to marry me. Then I'll be much older. You don't know. I might. I like you a lot. I hope so. I just hope your mum doesn't find out about me because I could get in serious trouble. You know, right? I could go to jail. I know, love. Knows no way. <laughs> I know love knows no way. It's like the room. You know what they say? Love is blind. Right, if anybody, I'm going to say it again. If anybody listening to this has not seen the room starring Tommy Wiseau, the greatest, worst movie ever, fucking watch it. Do it. That is an order. Um,. Joshua, she cares so little about me now. I mean, I'm glad she's leaving me home, but I don't think she's a good mum. She, she's just wants to be with her boyfriend now. I think that's so bad. I would take care of you if I could. Legally. Mm, take care taking care of a kid isn't what you've got in mind is it pal you see what I mean about kind of like this is where it, 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 your rage fuels isn't it I think I kind of was mentioning that and then as as, as usually happens with me I kind of lost track of um, of it but I just kind of want to say the reason that it's important that you try and not cling on to it and let it go is because it's only hurting you to feel that hatred isn't good for you in your life and it's 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 kind of like um you know it's karma it's carrying it on um you have to forgive really i don't it's difficult i don't mean forgive because I know I, I had a lot of, a little bit of criticism with the last video talking about, not much, but talking about Lorne's father and how I believe it was the catalyst in creating him, creating the deplorable human that he is. And obviously you're going to get some people that have, have suffered abuse and they're not interested in, in, in 
looking at why he ended up like he was. Some people like he's bad, and that's all there is to it. Um, and it's it's like. I understand that, and I would never, if someone said that to me, I wouldn't tell them that they're wrong, because that's the way they feel, I'm only trying to say that, and the thing is as well, I'm not trying to be arrogant, because if it, if it, if it, if it, if it had affected my life in a massive way, in a personal level, then it'd be very difficult for me to, to sit here and go, oh, forgive, forgive, let's all fucking skip around in the middle of a rainbow and play, and you know, you know, rainbows and unicorns and all that is very easy when you you're not involved in it. Um, from a professional point of view, I've touched upon it before. Please believe me when I tell you I've seen shit that doesn't get any worse than. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm not c- approaching this from a you know a keyboard warrior. It's like where you can write and say things, but don't know shit about it. I do. Um, so I'm just trying to give a bit of perspective, really. I'd hate people to think that, um, you know, because I know it angers a lot of people, the the approach that I have. But I just know that, I know deep down it's the right way to go about it. You know, you, you've got to pray for your enemy. Doesn't mean you enable the behaviour. Doesn't mean that you forgive them. Doesn't mean that you are... Um, giving them excuses, doesn't mean any of that, it just means that you are, in a way you're being a bit selfish, really, because you you kind of, you need to protect yourself, you need to, you know, not not carry that around with you, is what I'm saying, that kind of hatred, fucking hell, I really have gone off on one today, I wasn't expecting this, Um, but you know, if you're listening to this, you do kind of generally like the way I kind of approach things, which is cool. Uh, right, okay, so let's just wrap it up, shall we? So, um, you should tell your father after our weekend together, what's he going to do? He already told her he wanted me to live there. Maybe you could fight for custody. Hmm, this is interesting, so why would he want to do that? Um, he deplores, so he said the judge would hold that against him. And that they say I'm too young to tell them what I want, that sucks, yeah, but I don't want think about that I want to be happy about us yeah just think about us I'll try to keep you happy my princess deserves to be happy how do you plan on eating while she's gone she's leaving you food I hope hmm I'd like to think that there's a human part of him coming out there that's like you know he's kind of up you know, there's a part of him that doesn't want someone to suffer, but I find it difficult to, you know, grasp in these circumstances. Anyway, I think these this chat log's kind of interesting. It's got interesting aspects to it. it. Brings up a lot of interesting questions. I hope it's been interesting for you to listen to. I apologise if I've gone off on one, which I g- always do. You know, it's like, um, but that's why I do these kind of things. It, 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 I like to delve into the deeper topics it brings up a lot of interesting sometimes philosophical questions about the nature of us as a race how we manage our emotions depravity criminality blah blah blah. this is why i like it so much you know but guys please leave any feedback uh i would appreciate it um let me know if you enjoy these uh some people do some people don't you know it all depends i have a you know like I said, I don't turn out the amount of videos that I used to, but every now and again it's nice to get stuck into them, but there's only I would only do it if people get something out of it, otherwise what's the point? So yeah, your feedback is much appreciated. Uh, I really thank you for listening, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. Goodbye.